This key concept video is about homeostasis, hormones and the menstrual cycle. By the end of it, we will have looked at why homeostasis is so important, including the difference between negative and positive feedback, the endocrine system and the menstrual cycle. So what is homeostasis? It is the maintenance of a constant internal environment within a preset range, despite changes in the external environment. This is important for normal body functioning. Homeostasis works a little like a thermostat in a house. If the temperatures rise too high, the thermostat turns off the heating, like sweating, hairs lying flat and vasodilation in humans, to bring the temperature back to the pre-programmed level. Then, when the temperature drops too low, the thermostat turns the heating back on, like shivering, hair standing up and vasoconstriction in humans, to bring it up to the pre-programmed temperature. This process of reversing the change and returning conditions to within the normal range is known as negative feedback and it is an important concept in biology. A negative feedback loop requires several components. A sensory receptor to detect the stimulus, the change in the environment. A coordination system to process the information and then send the information to the effector. And an effector, a muscle or gland to carry out the response. As well as negative feedback mechanisms, there are positive ones too. And it is important to understand the difference between them. A positive feedback mechanism is when a change from the norm or set point results in a further increase away from the norm. An example is lactation as shown here. In positive feedback like in negative feedback we start with a stimulus. Here it is the infant suckling. This stimulus triggers a response. In this example it stimulates the hypothalamus which stimulates the pituitary to release oxytocin into the blood. Then we have an amplification stage. Instead of counteracting the initial stimulus like in negative feedback, positive feedback amplifies it. This means that the response increases the original change or deviation from the normal state. So here the oxytocin leads to greater milk letdown in the breast. The positive feedback loop continues until it is interrupted by an external factor or until the system reaches a limit. So here it ends when the baby stops suckling. Positive feedback is less common in biological systems compared to negative feedback because it tends to lead to extreme and potentially unstable conditions. However, it still plays essential roles in specific biological processes. Now that we have looked at positive and negative feedback, Let's look at the coordination systems involved. These are the nervous and endocrine systems, which work together to coordinate the body. The nervous system detects changes in the internal and external environment and brings about a rapid response, which is short-lived. It also sends signals to the endocrine system to release hormones, which usually results in a slower response, which lasts longer. In this video, we are going to concentrate on the endocrine system. The endocrine system involves the secretion of hormones, chemical signals, from the endocrine glands into the blood. The hormones are then carried all around the body to their target cells. Once at the target cells, they attach to the complementary receptors on the plasma membrane or inside the cell to bring about the response. We will now look at some examples of hormones. Let's start with insulin and glucagon, which control blood glucose concentration. When blood glucose increases, say after a meal, it is detected by the beta cells in the islets of Langhan in the pancreas. These then release insulin into the blood. Remember, glucose in, insulin. Most body cells have receptors for insulin, so insulin attaches to these, stimulating the uptake of glucose. The liver and muscle cells take up the glucose and convert it to glycogen to store it, a process known as glycogenesis. Glycogen is a large polysaccharide which is insoluble and unreactive, so it will just sit inside the cell until it is needed. This uptake of glucose by the cells then brings the blood glucose back within the preset range. 
When blood glucose drops, it is detected by the alpha cells in the islets in Langerhans, which secrete glucagon into the blood. Glucose gone, glucagon. This glucagon attaches to receptors primarily on the plasma membranes of liver cells. The resulting effects include glycogenolysis, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose, and gluconeogenesis, the production of glucose from non-carbohydrate organic molecules. The glucose is then released into the blood to raise the blood glucose levels back within the normal range. So between insulin and glucagon, blood glucose is kept within a safe range. Thyroxin is a hormone produced by the thyroid gland. Its primary role is to regulate the body's metabolism. Metabolic rate is a measure of the energy expended by an animal in a given time. Thyroxin is also involved in regulating body temperature, supporting growth and development, and supporting brain and heart function. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland in the neck. The hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland to release thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, into the bloodstream. Thyroid-stimulating hormone then stimulates the thyroid gland to produce and release thyroxin. When the levels of thyroxin in the blood are low, the hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland to produce more TSH, which in turn stimulates the thyroid gland to produce more thyroxin. As the levels of thyroxin rise, it provides negative feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which reduces the production and release of the thyroxin, thereby maintaining the balance of thyroxin levels in the body. Leptin is a hormone that reduces appetite and is secreted by adipose cells, in other words fat cells, into the blood. It then passes across the blood-brain barrier and attaches to receptors on the cells of the hypothalamus. In this way, it provides information about the status of the body's fat stores and enables the central nervous system to adjust food intake and energy expenditure accordingly. There are also leptin receptors in the brainstem, which bring about satiety, and in the dopamine system, which is responsible for the feeling of reward for feeding. An increase in adipose cells leads to an increase in the secretion of leptin, thereby reducing hunger and increasing satiety and energy expenditure. This therefore helps to regulate body weight and energy and is therefore a homeostatic negative feedback mechanism. Melatonin is a hormone released by the pineal gland. It plays a key role in regulating the body's circadian rhythms, including the sleep-wake cycle. Melatonin is typically produced in response to darkness and is suppressed by exposure to light. Melatonin production is highest at night, which helps to promote sleep, and is lowest during the day, which helps to promote wakefulness. One of the ways that melatonin works is by suppressing the production of cortisol, a stress hormone that can interfere with sleep. When melatonin levels are high, cortisol levels are low, so helping to promote sleepiness. The regulation of the circadian rhythm, including the sleep-wake cycle, also allows for supporting the immune function and supporting reproductive function. And now for the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is a complex process controlled by various hormones, including the pituitary hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, and the ovarian hormones, oestrogen and progesterone. These hormones are involved in both negative and positive feedback mechanisms. At the beginning of the cycle, FSH is secreted and this stimulates follicular growth, which results in oestrogen being secreted from the dominant follicle. Oestrogen stimulates the thickening of the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. It also inhibits further secretion of FSH from the anterior pituitary, which is negative feedback. Then, about halfway through the cycle, when oestrogen levels are high, it stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete LH and FSH. This is an example of positive feedback, oestrogen levels rising leading to increased production of LH and FSH by the pituitary gland. The switch from negative to positive feedback occurs because oestrogen binds to different receptors in the pituitary gland at different concentrations. At low concentrations, oestrogen binds to the receptors that inhibit the release of LH and FSH. However, at high concentrations, oestrogen binds to receptors 
that stimulate the release of these hormones. The large surge of LH and smaller surge of FSH bring about ovulation, the rupturing of the follicle to release the ovum. Once the ovum has been released from its follicle into the oviduct, the high levels of LH bring about the development of the remaining ruptured follicle into a corpus luteum, which is an endocrine gland in its own right. This starts to release large quantities of progesterone and lower levels of oestrogen. The roles of progesterone are to maintain the thickened endometrium, prevent contractions of the uterus and promote the development of the mammary glands. The roles of oestrogen are to maintain the thickness of the endometrium in case fertilisation occurs and to prevent further ovulation by inhibiting FSH and LH secretion. If fertilisation doesn't occur, the corpus luteum breaks down and the levels of oestrogen and progesterone in the blood fall, bringing about menstruation, the shedding of the uterus lining. So now that we've looked at homeostasis, hormones and the menstrual cycle, the key points to take away are that homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment within an acceptable preset range, despite changes in environmental conditions. Homeostasis is brought about by negative feedback mechanisms which bring conditions back to within the normal range. Positive feedback takes conditions further away from the normal range. Insulin and glucagon, produced by the pancreas, control blood glucose levels. Thyroxin, produced by the thyroid gland, regulates metabolism. Leptin, produced by adipose cells, controls appetite and energy expenditure. Melatonin, produced by the pineal gland, regulates circadian rhythms. Oestrogen and progesterone, produced by the ovaries, and luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, produced by the pituitary gland, are involved in the control of the menstrual cycle.